everyone, welcome to Strip Club. Yay. Yay. January 2015, new year, new place. We're in our brand new location in El Cajon. Um, we're now Cozy Creative Center, and today I'm going to present to you our very first strip club of the new year. Um, it is called Flower Song. Yay. Yay. Traditionally, we do fatigue fabrics in January. I think we've been doing that for close to four or five years, and this year we opted for the bright side. So we needed a very cheerful quilt. And uh, for these batik fabrics, we um, picked this simple block set on a background. In this case, we have a white crisp background. And so you know, we are using batik strips and we're using regular cotton fabrics for the background. We, we mix. We don't hold to the, if it's batiks, it must all be batiks. We like mixing cotton and batiks. So for us, this regular uh, background fabric is the regular cotton fabric, white. Uh, to go against the um, to go against the bright fun uh, teak strips. You want to see how the block comes together? Yes. yes. Let me show you the block. That's it. You can probably see it in the quilt. It's just one simple block. We set it with sashing and with corner strips. In order to make the block, we are going to use the tube technique. Don't we love the tube technique? If you don't know it. You have to know it, you have to embrace it, love it, make it part of your life. The tube technique is not something we invented, although we embraced it and we came up with a ruler to make it easy. The ruler is called the strip tube ruler. And for this particular quilt, we especially like strip tube junior. We'll get to that in a minute. So the first thing you do is pick one or a couple strips that you're going to use as cornerstones. So your cornerstones will come out of your strip set. Your cornerstones right here. Cut up some uh, squares to make your cornerstones. The next thing you'll do, every uh, strip will make one block. You will have leftover fabric from that strip and uh, you could use it for another project. I might have a sample. Mm -hmm. So from one strip you will get a single block. The first thing you do is cut a few squares out of the strip and then you have about 37, you know, 30 inches left over in the strip. With that, you will partner it with a background fabric to create a tube. <coughs> so here we have, now batiks are the same uh, vibrancy front and back, so you never really have to worry about what is right side up and what is not. So what you're seeing here is the back of the strip. We've sewn it together with the, um, and this is the back of the background. So those two strips are right side together. So quarter inch seam up along one side and down the other side to create a tube. So you follow me? This is a tube. It is sewn together into one single piece. Take this tube to your cutting mat, or in this case, our flannel board. <coughs> Strip tube ruler, he was an original guy. He goes all the way up to nine and a half inches. Strip, strip tube junior is the smaller guy. He goes up to six and a half inches. The big guy does everything the little guy does. The little guy is just so much easier to use smaller cuts. In this case, we're gonna use a much smaller number. If you were to use the larger one, you'd have a lot of ruler to contend with. So it's much easier, as with any squaring up, to use a ruler closer to the size you're cutting. So if we're, if we're squaring up a four and a half inch square, it's so much easier to use a four and a half inch or even a five and a half inch ruler than it is a 12 and a half inch ruler. <coughs> Same concept with the strip tube ruler. The junior one is great for these little sizes. So we take junior and we will place the line on the bottom stitching line, just like that. Cut up and cut down, cut out a triangle. Triangle looks a lot like this. Pull the triangle away from your strip set. Open it up and you get a diagonally pieced square like that. Hold on. Brilliant. 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 <laughs> <laughs> diagonally pieced square like that. 
Brilliant. Brilliant. It's early. Next time you cut off the top stitching line, you'll get another little square like that. You'll make a bunch of those little squares. And remember I had you um, cut out some squares from this fabric first. Now we're going to partner those all together. Are you following me? Yes. yes. So here I have half square triangle block or the diagonally piece block we just cut out. I have another one here from the same strip set, same fabrics. I have another one here and then I have a square. This is a quadrant. You will make four quadrants per square. Two of the quadrants you'll press the seams one way, two of them you'll press the seams the other way. The pattern will tell you which way to press them. When you put all four together, your block will lay beautifully flat. So the pattern gives you great pressing tips. One quadrant. Two quadrants. See where this is going? I'm not giving too much away. <laughs> Three quadrants. Four quadrants. Makes your ball. Really so when you have the pressing information, you pressed um, one to the background and the other to the print, you will put the two to the background opposite each other and the two to the prints opposite each other and then you'll block the really nice and <coughs> So when it's all done, no squaring up to do, it will measure eight and a half inches across. And then when you put it together, oh, well, before we jump to putting it together, notice that in the quilt, the cornerstones repeat the block to carry out the design to the borders. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So before you lay out your quilt, know what your background or what your border color is going to be. Find a complementing fabric for your cornerstones. Set those aside and use those last for your cornerstones. Then put the rest of your blocks together and lay it out. Between each block you have a sashing segment. It's the background fabric. So it goes block, sashing, block, sashing, block, sashing for the first row. The second row also sashing, only it's horizontal now sashing, cornerstone, sashing, cornerstone, sashing. So your blocks together by rows, then your sashing, then blocks, and then sashing. And then sew your rows together to get the center of your quilt. Next thing you'll do is add your borders. The borders in this quilt are actually sewn together first and then added to the quilt. So we have border one and border two here. Those two strips will be sewn together and then added to your quilt. So the best thing to do is to measure the width of your quilt Make one large strip set of these two colors that match the width. Make two of them, attach to the top and bottom. <coughs> Actually do the sides first. And then when you go to add the other borders, add the cornerstones to the ends, and then attach to your quilt. Zip, 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 all together. Flower song. Right, beautiful way to start the new year, don't you think? Yeah. Do you like it? Yes. yes. Very good. I have another sample to show you. Would you like to see it? Yes. yes. <laughs> but before I do that, <laughs> remember I hinted that you'll have some leftover fabric? Mm -hmm. You only need however many blocks you need. I can't do math on my feet, I'm sorry. You only need however many half square triangles you need to make a single block out of a single strip set because you need all the fabrics to match. If you keep cutting, you'll have extras. If you, you might get four or five additional half square triangle blocks out of a two. <coughs> You could put four of them together to create another little block, and you could make another little project. They're basic half square triangles, so you can lay them out any way you want. Maureen, who made our sample, came up with her own design, which I, I just adore. Can I show you? Yes. Oh, cute. Oh. <laughs> so this was made almost entirely from the leftover fabrics from the tube. Needed a little additional fabric for the sashing and then for the outer border. But wait, there's more. There's more. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my daughter walked. She made two. Oh my! <laughs> oh, that's cool. So cute. Yeah. 
both from the same strip set, but with just some additional mm -hmm. Very nice, bright fun, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful uh, tabletop. So the question was, do you have to buy extra fabric for the cornerstones so they all match? In fact, these don't are not exactly the same fabrics. They're the same color and the same value. And we picked them deliberately to be in the cornerstones because we knew we wanted blue for the border. So we did not want to use a blue for the cornerstones to go up against the blue border. We wanted a nice contrast. So Maureen specifically picked out those strips to be cornerstones before she put the rest of the quilt together. And they do come out of your strip set. Now, if you want them to match, you'll need four additional strips that match. And you can do that. And you can even, I mean, it's your quilt. You can do whatever you want. You can even do them out of the border fabric, which would create a different effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got you thinking, huh? <coughs> so we've seen it in beautiful brights, but we're sticking with the boutique theme. Different value set. You want to see this one? Yes. This is a Hoffman Valley Pop. I believe it's Hummingbird. And again, we picked out right here. purples for the cornerstones from the strip set because we knew we wanted purple up against the green border. So we made that decision first of all. Hello, Lottie. Thank you. I thought I was doing great with the stage. <laughs> I will need you for the next one, though. Mm -hmm. Nice? Inspiring? Yes. yes, we have a question with that. How many strip sets um, is a quilt in the back and a quilt in the front? Is it one each? The, the one that we have in back um, <coughs> is the throw size, and you can make it with one strip set. I okay. believe it takes 36 strips. Mm -hmm. Oh, it tells you on the pattern. 34. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it takes more than 40 strips. Okay. <laughs> So you can make it out of um, a, strip, yeah. a strip bundle. <coughs> Most strip bundles on the market are 40. Sometimes they're 42, and uh, sometimes they're like 50 or so. But most of our patterns have one size that works nicely with 40 strips, between 30 and 40 strips. So you will have some leftovers. This one is the uh, lap size, and I think it only takes eight, 12. <laughs> 12. So you can actually make two of these with the strips. So you just need additional background and order fabric. 17? Strips, 12. What is all the Oh, and then four in the corner and then the, the blocks. 60 blocks plus cornerstones. Don't forget your, um, your little cornerstones. That comes from strips, too. <laughs> Lovely. Any more questions on Flower Song? Okay, so listen, while I have you, I want to show you um, the quilt from the book we have coming out in the next couple of weeks. Can I share it with you? Oh, yes. So here's kind of a sneak peek. Oh, cool. This uses a fabric line I put together with Timeless Treasures called Tonga Zen. Now, Zen, everybody knows what to do, right? It's not helping. This, um, this quilt is called Tranquility Place. And it uses a lot of the techniques that we like. It uses a strip tube ruler. It uses a cutting corner technique. Um, it's actually five simple steps to put this quilt together. So if you don't, if you don't mind. Yes, thank you. So this is one of your And on your way, I'll take out the tranquility piece. Do we have any questions on either of these quilts? If not, I want to thank you for joining us here on our first presentation at Cozy Creative Center in January 2015, and uh, we'll do this again next month. So come back again next month for another pattern that uses two and a half inches.